Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and today I'm going to be making some clean and simple cards with fruit on them, but I really want to show you the Pink Fresh liquid watercolors. And this is the set. There's 12 colors. Can't show you the bottles because they sent me prototype bottles, so they don't have the right labels on them. But it is these really cool square bottles. They're going to be much easier to store than most little bottles. But these are the colors swatched out, and they are correct. Look at that bubblegum pink and the orange and yellow together. are going to mix to make my yellow. The purple is nice. The sky blue is nice. And that yummy key lime, along with some other colors. This kind of looks almost like my dot card palette. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> this is kind of like they thought of me with the colors. And I think out of all of the liquid watercolors that have come out really recently, this is my favorite color selection. And so the bottles are square, like I said, they have a dropper in them. They're a little awkward to get the lid off because you do have to press like you do with a medicine bottle. You have to push down a little bit, but it might help keep your kids out of the paints, which might be helpful for some of you. They uh, sent me the Fruitastic stamp set to play with today, so I'm going to be using the dyes for painting and the sentiments to go with them on my clean and simple cards. It's always good to have some clean and simple, really easy cards to make, and that's what I'm doing. I've die cut my pieces out of some watercolor paper, it's Arches cold press paper, and I put a little tiny bit of dimensional adhesive underneath, underneath each one and then stuck it very lightly onto my board. So I'm gonna be able to use the same adhesive on the card, but it keeps them lifted up off the surface and I don't have them sliding around and everything. And I can paint a whole bunch at once. So I cut two of everything so I could make lots and lots of cards. And I'm just gonna use a couple different colors to paint these. And thinking of them in sort of realistic colors, you know, lemons and pears are yellow, but they have in some places maybe a tinge of green in them or a little bit of red in them. So I'll put a little bit of an, like maybe an orangey color. You can do all kinds of wonderful things with fruit. Next time you go to the grocery store, look at the selection of colors that, that a pear comes in and notice that they're not all just pure yellow. They have other colors in them. And in my watercolor class, Exploring Watercolor, we learn all about mixing colors to paint fruit. So this is that same kind of an idea, but they look much more realistic this way. The paints are quite nice and I'm not putting them to a huge test here. I will use them again in the near future so you can see more about them. Um, but they do paint quite nicely. They, they blend well and everything. I don't know a whole lot about things like their light fastness rating. I assume like with most craft supplies, they're not made with super crazy light fastness and everything because they just don't do that for us as crafters. But I think these are going to be a very nice set of watercolors that I'm going to be using quite a bit. I want to try them in my Bible journaling and I want to test them out and maybe I'll do that in the near future. If you want to subscribe to my Bible journaling channel and find out, I want to see if something like this will go through the paper. And the reason that I say that is because with liquid watercolors, they're especially good for doing things like lettering. And I have been practicing my script lettering. I am terrible at it still, but I'm practicing it. I'm trying. And liquid watercolors are great for that if you're trying to use a brush and do actual watercolor for the lettering because they don't change color on you. It's not like you have to mix up a bunch and they're in even consistency. So I think they'll work pretty good for practicing lettering. So that's another thing I'm going to try with them. So if you are a letterer, liquid watercolors are fun to play with in that way. So with each one of these, I am either dipping the brush all the way into the jar. And the other thing you may have noticed when I'm picking up just a little bit of paint is tapping the top of the jar because there's always like a little bit of paint around the edge. And that way I'm not picking up a lot. I'm just picking up a little bit of color. And it's kind of a way to make it work like a palette and function in that way so that you have some some heavy coverage and some less coverage and stuff just by how much of the brush that you actually dip into the, the color itself. So now that we've done a few of these, I'm going to speed this up. Look at that bubblegum pink. Isn't that pretty? All of you who love pink, which is, I think, everybody is going to love that. And I'm just going to mix it with a couple other colors in order to make it more like a strawberry, but I'm going to let that pink be the highlight. 
So I'm going to drop a little bit of the purple in the shadow area as well. The colors on the screen here, I wish they were more exact to what's in the bottle. They were a little more intense from my view while I was painting, which is nice. You'll see a little bit better in the cards that I show you in a few minutes. But they're really fun and easy to do. The one struggle that I have, as always, is waiting for things like the berry to dry before I put the greens on top. It's why it's really good to make a whole bunch of them so that you can do all the fruit at the same time and then later on when they're dry, when you're finished with everything, then you can go back and put the greens on. I also decided to add a little detail to each one of them using a white and a black pen. So I thought that would be kind of fun. So I'm doing that with the strawberries, adding their little seeds. And sometimes the seeds look like they're black, so you could even get away with doing it in black, but I'm using a Signo gel pen, a white uh, uniball pen. And then for things like the, um, the oranges, I'm putting just a little highlight on top because oranges have that sort of dotted texture on them. A little shiny highlight on my apples and then a little bit on my lemons. And then go in with the black pen on the shadow side and add a reciprocal kind of just a little tiny bit of shading on it. So here we go with the cards themselves. I added a little stripe on the bottom just with a, a black pen, rounded the corners and stamped my sentiment. And you can see how easy these are to put together. All you have to do is stamp your sentiment. If you're going to use all the same one, then you're just going to put a selection of fruit around each one of them. And getting the fruit die cut is probably the hardest part of the whole thing. If you have a, a machine like I do, I have a Gemini Junior and it just went whoop, whoop, whoop right through. And I was able to then mass produce these by putting a little, little line on the bottom of the card, rounding, and then just stick everything together. Worked really well and these are going to be a great set of cards to have to be able to send out to some friends. And they're really fun. They're bright colored against that craft card base, which is actually not craft, it's the Nina cardstock. They're, um, they're uh, uh, Desert Storm. Yeah, that's the name of it. Boy, I'm losing my mind. So anyway, here are the colors again. You can see that picture as well over on my blog and a list of colors and everything and where you can go get them if you need them right away or else you can wait for them to come to your favorite crafty store. Sounds like my dinner's ready, so I'm going to go and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. <laughs>